Hi, this is C. Schmalz, Applications Engineer at Microchip Technology. In this video, we are discussing time interval error, or TI for short. I first introduced the concept of time interval error in video number five of this series, which is entitled, What is Stability? If you have not already done so, I suggest you watch that video before proceeding further with this video. Digging a little deeper into this now, I am going to narrow the focus compared to the more general way that I described tie in that previous video. Let's say that these blue lines represent the rising edge of an ideal clock, and the horizontal x-axis is time. Recall from the previous videos that an ideal clock always has exact, unchanged frequency and phase. These red lines represent a real clock's rising edge. Sometimes the real clock's rising edge matches the ideal clock. Other times it falls before the ideal clock or after the ideal clock, as drawn here. The distance and time between the blue and red clock edges, the interval between the ideal clock rising edge and the real clock rising edge, is the error. We call this error time interval error, or TIE, because it is the error, the time interval, on the time axis between the real clock versus the ideal clock. We could also call this phase error, but it means the same thing in this context, so I will use the term time interval error, or TI, because that is what it is typically called in timing applications. The real non-ideal clock, again shown in red, can arrive before or after the ideal clock rising edge at different time intervals. Let's use the example of a 10 megahertz clock. In this illustration, we'll have the real non-ideal clock's rising edge be perfectly aligned with the ideal clock's rising edge most of the time. But for some reason, once every second, the real clock's rising edge is here, one picosecond distance from the ideal. This means that the real clock has a time interval error of one picosecond that occurs with a frequency of one hertz. Let's say this real clock also has another non-ideal edge that occurs uh, five times a second, and its time interval error amplitude is four picoseconds. This means that this real non-ideal clock also has a tie, and its amplitude is 4 picoseconds, and it occurs at a rate of 5 hertz. The real clock may also have a non-ideal edge that occurs, say, 17 times per second, with a time interval error of 0 0.5 picoseconds, which would mean a time interval error amplitude of 0 0.5 picoseconds occurring at a rate of 17 hertz, and so on. Do you see what I'm doing here? I'm describing the real non-ideal clock in terms of adding a bunch of amplitude frequency pairs together. Does that remind you of something you may be more familiar with in the voltage domain, where we describe a signal waveform as the sum of its frequency components? Recall that any periodic waveform can be described as a weighted sum of its Fourier components. That is what we are doing here. But instead of breaking the waveform down into its various components in the voltage domain, we are doing this in the phase domain. If you are scratching your head in a little bit of confusion here, that's okay. 
You may want to go back and watch the earlier video about thinking in the phase domain instead of the more familiar voltage domain. The key thing to keep in mind here is that in the voltage domain, amplitude is described in, well, volts, but in the phase domain, the amplitude is described in, well, phase units. So to make things even more fun, phase can be described in seconds, radians, degrees, or other units. If you need a refresher on that point, you may want to go back and watch video number three in this series, which is entitled, What is Phase? Over the past several videos, we have gained an understanding of phase noise and of time interval error, or TIE. In the next video, we will demonstrate how TIE is related to a phase noise plot.